You know, usually actors are called to important events, you know, because they have uh, they have some uh, celebrity value. And actors may not have celebrity value because of their talent. They have it sometimes because they're just visible to people. There are many people who achieve a lot, but they don't get noticed. But even a new anchor will get noticed and can become a star. You know, Talib, the writer, says that actors are asked on various questions. They'll be asked, you know, uh, what do you think about the Central Vista project? Or they'll be asked about neurosurgery or nanotechnology. And the actors won't say, I don't know. They'll, <laughs> they'll answer the question because Talib says actors are trained to look intelligent. Okay. So you'll forgive me if I don't make the cut you know, for the quality of people who are here. I'll start straight away. I made a film called Stumble, which was released in 2002 at the Mumbai International Film Festival. It was the opening film for the cinema of the world. I had no idea about how to make a film. I had directed a TV series before, but, but this was the first time I was actually making a film. First time direction, first time script, first time editing, first time camera, first time assistants. We didn't know how to make a film. But you know, there are three things I did with the film. I'll mention one by one. The first was that to actually do a film, you have to record sound separately. Now we do sync sound, most films, at least in Mumbai. In the south, it's not there so much, but in Mumbai, all the Hindi films you do. 90% of them you'll have to do sync sound. That means what you capture at location during shooting is the sound you'll see in the movies later. So, but I didn't want to borrow equipment, which is called Nagra. Those days, celluloid, nobody uses it now, but it used to be there. You have to record sound separately, use it as a pilot track for dubbing later. But I didn't want that equipment. I recorded the sound on a smaller camera, but when we went for a dub, the sound engineer, they said, you can't use it because cinema is 24 frames per second, but uh, video is 25 frames per second. I recorded on a video camera, the sound. So over the length of the film, it would be out of sync by six, seven minutes. So they said, you can't do it. I said, no, yeah, you, yes, you can. They said, how? I said, supposing you want to share an apple among four people, you get a 25% cut. Among five people, you'll get a 20% cut. So if I do a ratio of 24 divided by 25 and multiply it by the length, I'll shorten it to that extent. It'll sync perfectly, I said. They said it'll distort the sound. I said that level, if it won't distort. But even if there was even the infinitesimal distortion, we'll dubbing anyway later. So somebody will put fresh sound. It doesn't matter, I said. And we did it, we saved on the equipment. That is one. Just a simple thing, it's not a great innovation. But it's great because I think that's the first time in the history of cinema in India somebody did it. It's so easy it was. No, 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 don't dump Lord. I want to make a point. The second thing was that, you know, we had to do what is known as, see those days celluloid was still there, but non-linear editing had already come. Uh, that means, see, earlier you had to cut the film, actual celluloid, and with cello tape actually join, and that's how you made the film. But when it was in bits and bytes, you can actually just take a chunk and cut and paste wherever you want. That's how you could edit it. Non-linear editing was already there. So you'd capture the, take the celluloid, print, and you capture it on video, and then edit it, and then make the cut again according to the sequence of editing. Film celluloid will have anything called edge code. Every frame will have a number. So you start, you, the joining numbers you give, the end number of this and the beginning number of that. And that is how the film will be joined. So what would happen is you have expensive editing uh, equipment and you do the editing and it will generate what is known as a edit sequence, you know. And it will take you take the edit sequence and you slingshot it. That means it actually sends it to the celluloid uh, center where they will cut it accordingly. 
I said, no, I won't do it. It's too expensive. I'll, I'll be, after editing, I'll make my assistant director sit and write the age code. They said, it'll take too much time. I said, how much time? It'll take a couple of days. I said, that is fine. We sat and we did that. And we didn't go, we used a simple, you know, a, like a beginning version of editing. And we did it, did the editing in that. Even earlier when I did a serial called Garva, I said, why, why should we, I wanted to shoot it on, uh, they were, we used to shoot on beta cam those days. It was very expensive. I said, you know, I want to shoot it digitally, on digital video. They said, you know, to get a camera that gives you the same resolution as beta cam uh, will be very expensive. I'm talking about like, you know, nearly a crore. That is the kind of camera you would need. I said, but what is the, what is the final resolution that of telecast? That's all I need to do. Why should I actually take such a large tank if I just need to fill a bucket? So they said, what does that mean? I said, you know, the final re rendering resolution is the resolution I want. I don't want to get something that gets compressed to that. So we bought two cameras from uh, Singapore, and I was those days shooting with multiple cameras. For the I wrote and edi edited, uh, I wrote and directed that uh, serial called Garva. And um, when we did it, those cameras were really like you know, thousands of rupees. That's all. They were not even lakhs of rupees. So I shot it in that, and when it came, when we sh when it came to when it was telecast, a lot of people praised it, and the the channel sent its technical team to see what cameras we were using. We were using really tiny home cameras kind of thing, you know. They said, how does they do it? I said, well, if I send you high resolution and you compress it to this resolution, what difference does it make, I said. Sometimes, I'm talking about 1999, 2000. So sometimes I think we were the first ones to do this in India. Nobody had done digital video till then. That was professional. Why I tell you, I'll t I was, I'm an engineer, I'm a trained mechanical engineer. But I was a mediocre engineer. I could read and, you know, like I could do well in exams, but I didn't know how to apply it. But when I was confronted by a challenge, you know, when I had to spend money and it was really helpless, you know, the door opens actually. And that's when creativity begins. I'll tell you this because I've heard many such stories later. I will say one last example before I make my point. See, when um, I acted in a film which required a lot of army helicopters, that film was done with a very small budget. You know, like people don't believe it, but that small that budget was. But we had army helicopters in that film. So the director said, when students asked, how did you get that in such a small budget? He said, you know, I stood on the balcony of my flat because ONGC, you know, helicopters keep going from Mumbai into the coming back. We just shot that from the... And then post-production, we just painted it, you know, digitally with, uh, with army colors. What am I trying to tell you? This thing about, we will do it the way it was done before, is a deadly thing. This leads to standardization, this leads to monopolies, centralization, and you, you, you lose your agency. That means you lose the ability to do something yourself, because you're borrowing from others who will tell you, this is, these are best practices, and this is what you have to do here. The point I'm making is, look at Belagavi. It's comparable to Bangalore in many ways. It's equidistant, 500 kilometers out from big cities, Hyderabad, Bangalore, Mumbai. Like Bangalore itself is in the center of the Deccan Plateau, so it's equidistant to many places. You have all, round, all year round good weather because of the elevation. You have plenty of water, but I'm scared with the idea of the smart city. They want your city to become like something else is a very dangerous idea, I think. Because I'll tell you what happens
when you want to make a city like some other city, you take a model from somewhere else. What happens? In the Bangalore I grew up, we were, a, we were like fifth or sixth or seventh city in India, but we had a better quality of life. In real terms, I'll tell you what I mean by that. We used to play cricket on the road, or football on the roadside, and we would drink out of roadside taps, drink water straight. At homes, we used to drink water straight out of the tap, no filter. None, none of this fancy equipment, God knows whether it works or not even, okay? But we are so scared now, you know? So we take, we are scared, we are per perpetually in fear. So we could drink water. That was like any developed country. The value of land in Bangalore is high, I'll tell you. We are now building a peripheral ring road. Okay, a part of the peripheral ring road to complete it. 21,000 crores. The cost of acquisition of land is 15,000 crores in that. 15,000 crores. Imagine in Karnataka, every jilla, every district in Karnataka can have an AIMS and an IIT, and you'll have enough money left over to fund it every year for the next 20 years. That is what 15,000 crores is. Actually, does it fix any problem? I'm not even sure. But this is what happens when you create a monster and you say this is good, you have to keep feeding the monster. That's what a metropolis is. You have to think creatively, you have to think small, like we thought, and you can do big things. And you know, Bangalore should re realize, as one of your speakers so inspiringly said, there's no point building a great bungalow or a palace in the middle of a slum. If everybody around you is successful, then you're successful. If Bangalore is leapfrogs into the future, but leaves the rest of Karnataka behind, it's not a great idea. And I feel nobody's going to care for anybody. It's something that you must think of, and I'm saying it from my personal example. Look at Bangalore now. That land value has meant that my father and mother, my father's salary when he married my mother was 108 rupees a month. My mother's salary was 119 rupees a month. He, for five years after his retirement, he was actually paying back, you know, the loan he had borrowed to build a house. But we lived in a big house. Now, I earn a lot more money my father could have dreamt of, but I live in a small flat. This is what my quality of life has become. We pretend that we are doing well, but we are not. Earlier, to live in the center of the city was a great idea, but People who have a lot of wealth live very far away, in the suburbs, in gated communities. Actually, that land was very easy to get earlier. Now, that land is very expensive. Actually, there is no sense to it. There is no model to it. People live in homes which are far away from their workplaces. So when we demolished, we, there was a lot of good going for Bangalore. I'm not denying that. But many things we did very wrong, like this. One of the great things we did was we innovated. We, we were no longer the public sector city. We are now the Silicon City. We are a unicorn city. We do the biggest startups in India. All that is fine. We have innovated, but we don't have the infrastructure for the you know, innovation. We trouble young entrepreneurs. They have to commute for three hours. You know, the air is bad. All the panchabhutas, the groundwater is plummeted to thousands of feet. You know, it's bad water. We had 830 kilometers, we have 830 kilometers of actually Raja Kaluvis, which was, which was storm water drains, but they're all filled with sewage now. We, had a, we were a city of a thousand lakes. You know, our lakes are famous for absolutely the wrong things today. Now, why do I tell you is this, that we must think differently. We must innovate by doing what we can do best. I did engineering because I scored in, in the high 90s in mathematics. It's like a life sentence. In my time, if you got science and math so well, you had to do engineering. You had like too much peer pressure. You can't do anything else. The same thing for medicine. Today, there is a lot of stuff that you can do. There is a paradigm shift, that old cliche, but let me say differently now. 
what is the paradigm shift? The question that we used to ask when we were young is what is the scope of a field of study or endeavor? Science, technology, medicine, management. What is the scope? If you take that, what is the scope of that field, we used to think. Today, there is a great opportunity. The new education policy will come. It will be implemented in Karnataka. Just like GST and everything else in India, it will come with a lot of friction and attrition and argument and distraction. But India muddles through and fixes it. Okay? The opportunity is this. The time has come for you young people to ask, what is the possibility that is me? It's no longer external. It's not the scope of the field. It's the scope of the self. What can I become is the question you need to ask. And the world is open. India needs you to be free in your thought, that you're not bound by the old, trammeled by doubt, and following the path that has been set by others for you. There are some things to take from it, some things to leave behind and move on. And this is the, this is, we are on the cusp of greatness, this country. And that greatness shall be achieved by you people of your generation. It's not that we did everything wrong. My generation, the generation before us. But we have done plenty wrong. Here is an opportunity, opportunity to do good. And you know, I'm moved by the stuff I've seen here, what this young team here has organized for us. I've seen the work they have done otherwise too, outside this te TEDx talk. You know, I'm so impressed. And I think we should look at the idea of 10 great cities in, uh, in Karnataka. And this is a state that has been at the forefront of innovation and technology. And we should return to that, and it shall not come out of just Bangalore. It shall come out of many cities. And I'm thinking that you, Belagavi, will pioneer that effort. Thank you very much.